Hey, Wichita. I'm Officer Chad Ditch. I'm with the Public Information Unit. Uh, we are coming today with our new coffee break, but I want to introduce my co-host, Officer Trevor Macy. Trevor, Hi. what's going on, brother? Uh, not much. Just here, uh, excited to relaunch the podcast. Some of you may remember we used to have a, a crime cast weekly. Uh, this is kind of a new thing. Yeah. Um, it's a little less formal. Obviously. Um, yeah, right? obviously we're in t-shirts. Uh, opportunity to just get to know the members of the Wichita Police Department, yep. get to know Chad and myself. Uh, here's some of the things that we're doing and, and uh, hopefully learn something too. Yeah. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. You know, we want to make sure everybody knows what's going on out there, but at the same time, I like how you said, want to um, get to know us. I think it's good to be like family oriented. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So what's the, uh, what's the format for this show going to be then? So I think it's cool that we're going to bring on people from the department right you're gonna t we're gonna let you see who the um, we're gonna introduce the chief of the pol uh, the police department obviously and then um, periodically weekly or by or by monthly we'll bring on more guests just let you get to know everybody on the department hopefully I'm excited about it I'm excited we can talk about special events too obviously we'll we'll mention some some crime things yeah because uh, we're police officers yeah it kind of um, goes hand in hand right yeah some crime stats crime prevention things like that yeah um, but yeah why uh, coffee break though well because i think i think we love coffee we i mean we do no matter what hour right i mean can you have coffee oh, we were, before you I go mean, to bed yeah, yeah 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 and they just go right to sleep oh yeah oh man oh yeah, yeah. me too my wife though eight o'clock at night she's having some she's up all night long yeah i mean you work nights long enough you eventually build up kind of a tolerance for caffeine yeah so it it, it would take and I see you got your Crime Stoppers mug. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is my plug for Crime Stoppers. If you know anything about a crime that occurred in the Wichita Sedgwick County area, you can get a cash reward by calling Crime Stoppers three one six two six seven twenty one eleven. Nice plug. And then I have the Batman mug. Um, I have yet to see the new Batman. Though. Gotta see it. I, I've heard must that you see. gotta see it. Must it's a must watch. see. Yeah. And it's got the guy from Twilight, Twilight. right? Yeah, Robert Pattinson. Yeah. I told my daughter that she was like, "I'm I'm Team Jacob." Ten years ago, I never would have imagined I'd see him uh, in a Batman movie. Yeah. But I'm glad that I did. Really? It was an experience. I might have to go. I might have to go. Yeah. So, well, let's get into our first guest. What do you think? Yeah, um, I'm down with that. You, you can't start the first Coffee Break <laughs> podcast without introducing the man himself, Interim Chief Lem Moore. Lem Moore. He's here today, believe it or not. Okay, so one of us is going to go away so we can interview the chief because we well, obviously... We're, we're just going to slide over. We're just going to slide and over. he's going to come over here. Okay, we're going to put you on the outside because you look a little bit better in your shirt than I look in mine. Okay, so I'll slide to the outside. You like that? Yeah. Okay, right. let's bring Appreciate in the chief. It. What do you guys think? Let's do it. So here we are, our first ever interview on Coffee Break the Podcast, and we have the man himself... Chief Lim Moore. Chief, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic. You're Thanks doing for having me. No, thank you for Thanks being here. For I know you're a busy here. man. So um, so one of the questions we want to ask, we know you're the chief of police and you've been on the department for a couple decades now, um, but tell the people who who's Lim Moore. Okay. Well, I'm a correct. Not a couple decades, about three decades. Three decades. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Lim Moore, uh, you know, I, I always I like to make the joke, uh, you know, when I'm meeting people. Uh, however, Kansas City Chiefs, they take it away from me, but I like to tell them that I'm like the Tyreek Hill of law enforcement. You know, I'm a little guy, but I get the job done, you know. Okay. There you go. Um, but, uh, you know, over the years, I've learned a lot, and I was, I've been able to experience, um, you know, every bureau, uh, every division within the police department. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've seen sad times, you know, happy times, and was able to, have been able to interact with a lot of people. Um, there are people that uh, still remember me from, uh, you know, 25 years ago that come up to me and say, hey, you were my D.A.R.E. officer, right. you were my school liaison officer, or, you know, I, I remember you, you worked at EMCU and I was a runaway and you helped get me, you know, get me back on the right path and I appreciate you and think about you sometimes. So you know, those are good feelings and good things that I hear from people. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but Lim Moore himself, you know, outside of the, you know, the job, uh, Lim Moore uh, is, is you know, somebody that uh, appreciates the community, that mm -hmm. appreciates, you know, the life that God's been, you know, given him. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I like to, uh, you know, attend Bible study. I like to, you know, learn uh, from the Bible. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, and, then, and to be able to translate the things that I learn, you know, on my path in this life, you know, over to, you know, the, the things that I, you know, interactions I have with people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for instance, uh, you know, forgiveness. This is one of the big things that, you know, the revelations I've had in the past three years. 
um, I'm always asking, you know, oh God, forgive me for this. Oh, please right. watch out, forgive me for this. And then I stop and thought, you know, how many times do I forgive others, yeah. you know, for their mm -hmm. trespasses or for the things that, the way they make me feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's become one of those things where people say, you know, I like interacting with you because, you know, I may do something uh, that you don't like or maybe something that I feel that maybe was inappropriate out of line, but yet you treat it like it was nothing the next day, you know, yeah. and you move on. And that's what life's about is being able to get past those feelings that you have and be able to understand that people make mistakes mm -hmm. and you know even though they making this those mistakes um, if they're willing to change you shouldn't make them live in those mistakes right. that's a huge difference it is it is and and being a, a even in the as a young police officer when you're out there making arrests or um, you're dealing with different parts of the community I think it's it's also something that we do as well um, you might just arrested somebody who committed murder or committed a heinous act and now you have to interview that person and if you have that anger with you when you interview them you're not going to get anywhere with the case and you're not going to get anywhere to get justice for that victim so i think it's a great key to bring as an officer as a leader to this department is to to have that to know that you need to forgive people or at least know that we're all human nobody is um uh king is a uh, what's the word i'm looking for perfect perfect but we also nobody's exempt from the trials and tribulations right. mm. of life yeah. so yeah yeah I like that. So uh, stepping back a little bit, though, like prior to law enforcement, you were in the military, correct? Yeah, actually, I uh, was I moved to, to Wichita from St. Joseph, Missouri uh, at age 16. And so I experienced one year at Southeast High School uh, where I, I was able to do some gymnastics and, you know, and, uh, you know, some wrestling and, and get involved with some sports and meet some people. But then uh, moved uh, further out west of mm -hmm. that location, uh, about Central and Grove and I ended up going, attending and graduating from East High School. Okay. Uh, and my, I had come from a family that, you know, I already knew there's no way that I'm going to uh, be able to change my lifestyle unless I decided to make an actionable or a conscious effort yeah. to do or be something different or be mm -hmm. something more than uh, what I was being at the time. And so I uh, went off to the Marine Corps. Uh, I made sure I made it to the Marine Corps Reserves because I'm thinking, you know what, I've never been anywhere away from my family. And so I went to the reserves because then at that point I could always come home and if I loved it, I can just always go full time and, and move forward from there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, while in the Marine Corps reserves, um, I, was, I met an actual police officer, Wichita police officer, and, uh, and Dave Alexander, you know, awesome guy, quiet, reserved. Um, one of those guys where that, that you wouldn't think would interact with a, a young, you know, 19, 20 year old black male mm -hmm. um, the way he did, which was fantastic. At least back during that time, I never really, you know, interacted with a lot of people. But uh, we were sitting on the Chow Hall bus on our way over to McConnell, looked at uh, his green utility and he had like a badge, uh, you know, that was on his belt. And I mm -hmm. go, hey, what are you, military police? He explained to me, no, I'm Wichita police. And that myth, I'd never really come across an officer except for on standing on my front porch down at Central and Grove. I see some black males run by and then yeah. I see some officers run by. The officer comes straight to me and asks me for my ID, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as if I were involved with the situation. Right. Um, obviously, they were able to clear it up real quick because, mm -hmm. you know, Mama Bear came out and was like, why are you talking to my son? Right. What's going on? Yeah. And uh, they continued on looking for the their real suspects. But that's the only interaction I'd really ever had with the police. Yeah. Um, but uh, he was able to take the time and explain to me the hours, what police officers did. Mm -hmm. And my path was to be a nurse. Yeah. You know, I was wanting to be a nurse. I wanted to go that direction and uh, to help people. So I, I knew ultimately, you know, no matter what, I just wanted to be supportive and be a part of you know of, of our society and helping people making people smile making people feel good on the inside yeah once he explained to me a little bit about law enforcement you know that hey police officers you know have a huge responsibility in changing people's lives mm -hmm. you know and, and causing positive effect in people's lives um, I realized that that was that's the path I wanted to go so up until age uh, and I was at the time I just turned 21 up until age 21, I never even thought about being a police officer. Right. That weekend, that Saturday, I learned a little bit about it. That Monday, I was downtown filling out an application. Wow. Yeah, things have changed. I had to actually come down here to fill out the yeah, application. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, and, but he made uh, that big of an impact on he you. He made that huge of an impact. Mm -hmm. and, and it was so great that when I was promoted to uh, deputy chief mm -hmm. um, back in, in January, I actually invited him, and he pinned my badge on. So the oh, photos wow. um, of the, the, the male that's in that photo is actual um, detective, retired Detective Dave Allen. Alexander, mm -hmm. who 30 years later, I wanted to show my respect and my appreciation by having him pin my deputy chief badge on. That is awesome. That's yeah. a great story. So uh, speaking of 21 is when you came on. Same thing now is 21 is when, how old you have to be to be a police officer. What would you tell the 21-year-old self from everything that you've learned over your three decades in policing? What would you tell the 21-year-old self today? All right. 
Yeah, 21 years of age. I mean, unless you're a very patient, humble person, mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's what I, I give my credit to is that I learned to be able to sit back, you know, and just watch and observe. Yeah. And at the same time, I wasn't afraid to jump in there and get the job done. Uh, 21 years of age now, um, a lot of people aren't even moved out of their homes mm -hmm. at this point in time. Uh, so I would definitely say get your education. You yes. know, get a little bit of life experience, whether it's through the military, whether it's through a little bit of traveling, but getting out in the community and participating, volunteering, and do some ride-alongs with police mm -hmm. officers. Um, but if you can start your career as early as possible, um, it's it's a good choice. I actually, I'm so happy that I was able to do this. Yeah. Um, at age I'm 52 now, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm able to retire with a 30 year career if I chose to. Mm -hmm. And so I always tell people back when I was 21, um, I really felt pretty bad, you know, because some of my friends worked at Boeing, yeah. you know, they worked at uh, Cessna mm -hmm. and they would laugh at Christmas time because they got a two week break. Right. And they would say, hey, we got a bonus and we got a two week break, what do you do? Doing. Well, I'm working midnight, you right, know, I'm working yeah. Christmas. And uh, so I literally was like, man, why don't police officers get bonus? We do a lot of work. We, mm -hmm. you know, we put a lot of effort in. And then you realize just when you're young, you don't know the ins and outs. Well, we're getting paid by tax dollars and right. we're not going to, you know, um, take tax dollars that could be put somewhere else, yeah. you know, um, and wasted on a bonus or something along those lines for a police officer. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I got past that. <laughs> and then several years later, um, you know, uh, obviously Boeing, you know, left and mm -hmm. moved away. And so a lot of the, the people that were a part of that had to move away and leave their families and or pack up and find another job. Mm -hmm. And I realized how blessed I truly was. Right. You know, and the fact that I have a career that's stable, yeah. you know, and that, uh, you know, unless we go through something like Detroit where you had to go bankrupt, Wichita, yeah. um, you know, city fund is always going to be here. There's always going to be a, re you know, a retirement ready for public service. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the encouragements that I give people is that, you know, working in public service isn't exactly like nonprofit, but it's on those same lines where you're helping people, yeah. but at the same time, it's stable. You know, Absolutely. it's more stable mm -hmm. than the private practice, which is giving, you know, it can pay you right up front and give you the upfront money, yes. but is it is it sustainable? Is right. it something that when you turn 50 or when you turn 60, that when you're ready to stop working, that's gonna have that paycheck continually coming in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to where you're able to survive? You know, yeah. and you're able to pay the bills and you're able to have, um, you know, a warm home, mm -hmm. you know, to live in. So I would tell the 21 year old to, you know, look at all those different factors uh, and take all of those things into consideration because, um, you know, their future is important and it is key. And, and when I retire, I'm going to be looking towards them to be the educated leaders, yeah. you know, that are needed to, uh, you know, help me feel safe. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing, being new up here at the Public Information Unit, I get to obviously be where you work at. And the one thing that I always enjoy seeing is all the chiefs of the past, right? Mm -hmm. You see everybody that's ever been a police chief. And your your title is interim chief, but your picture's on that wall forever. So yes. to, to us, you're, you're chief, right. right? We're not going to say interim chief. How, how does that feel being up there on that wall with all these other prestigious leaders that we've had in the city? I can tell you. I, I literally, I remember when I went to the, the conference room down on that fourth floor, walking in there um, with my, you know, suit and tie, which was, you know, really wasn't too great back then because I couldn't afford one, mm -hmm. and uh, doing my interview with the chiefs at the time and then all the commanders, and it was really intimidating, and then walking out and getting a conditional job offer yeah. and then looking at that board and looking at all those faces of the chiefs on there and the thought crossing my mind, man, It'd be awesome to be forever ingrained in the history, you know, of that board, a right. uh, chief of the Wichita Police Department. And then it hit me, ah, that ain't never gonna happen. And then I <laughs> walked out of there, you know, yeah. <laughs> and then started my career. Right. And even up until, you know, this year, mm -hmm. it wasn't even a thought, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. in my mind. It's not one of those things that I was pursuing. Mm -hmm. My ultimate goal from the first time I joined the police department was to retire as a lieutenant. Right. Retire as a lieutenant. Mm -hmm. And then midway, when I hit about 20 years, I was like, ooh, I have a chance. I want to retire as a captain. Right. That was my goal. And uh, working under the leadership of, you know, um, Deputy Chief Wanda Givens, mm -hmm. um, she was able to give me great guidance and um, structure and uh, organizational skills. And so I was able to make it to Deputy Chief, mm -hmm. um, you know, the the interim chief chief position total surprise right um, you know that right there um, when I was called in and asked uh, I didn't hesitate yes you know mm -hmm. I, t I jumped jumped towards it right. um, didn't think about um, all of the uh, inter interactions and uh, effects that it would have uh, on my daily life mm -hmm. right. um, but even till to this day the first three weeks uh, were, were heck you know it, it was it was really bad right. uh, coming into some um, um, media, high-level media mm -hmm. issues that mm -hmm. had to be addressed. 
Um, but like, like I said, it's a good thing that I have that uh, great church foundation, yes. you know, over at Central Community Church. And, uh, you know, in the relationship with Pastor Bob Beckler over there, I was able to have some conversations and keep me on the right path and understand and see that I'm in the in, in place for a reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, with the different race relations that are, that are happening mm-hmm. within our community and that are being reported, you know, it hit me that, you know, right time, right place right. You know, to be able to make some positive change. Um, it did surprise me, though. Um, you know, I was I'm, I'm a loner. Uh, for the most part, uh-huh. uh, it surprised me that uh, you know a lot of officers. All we have like 900 um, um, police staff members, mm-hmm. 700 of them commissioned, that actually were really positive yeah. and, mm-hmm. uh, and and liked me. Uh, but you know, you go through your career, you work your head, work hard, you keep your head down, you make things happen, and you interact with people high and by, but no one really you know goes yeah. above and beyond. It's like hey, you know, pat you on the back mm-hmm. and uh, you know and. and let you know that they they are are there your yeah. friend, mm-hmm. uh, but once I got promoted, it was nice to be able to see you know that people noticed you know the positive effects that I've had on others in our career, and uh, we have a lot of great men and women within the Wichita Police Department. I'm very proud to be their leader. Yeah, um, they're making it. Yeah, we've had our bumps and there's been some mistakes, but they're making me very proud. And they're making it easy to be their leader. Yeah, because. Um, I would say over the past few years, they've done a fantastic job in building bridges in our community. Yeah, uh, you know, being able to create those networks and, and you know make positive change. Mm-hmm. You know, throughout all uh, areas of our community, no matter the social class. You know, they've they've affected it in a positive way. Yeah. And um, the only thing that I've observed in my my past few years here is that um, a lot of attention has gone into the community Mm -hmm. and a lot of it hasn't gone back into the officers. And so that's my goal. We're still going to continue to be supportive of the community. We're still going to continue to do those positive things, do those drives and, you know, get out there and and do the, you know, neighborhood cleanups, the block parties, just different things like that to build Mm -hmm. those bridges. Those are going to, those are very ever ingrained within the organization. But I have to be able to feed and refuel, you know, the people that are doing the job. Mm -hmm. And so my task is to make sure that I go back to the basics of internal, you know, professional um, uh, inspiration, professional um, connectivity with the officers and letting them know, you know, that uh, their their executive staff cares. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't have to do that through financial gain or right. means to them. I can actually do that through my actions, mm-hmm. you know, and, and my staff can also, you know, take the steps to be able to show that, you know, we are here and supportive of, of our officers. And so that's my main focus, you know, while I'm here is to make sure that those officers are re-energized, they're, they're re- re-fed with the motivation and yeah. inspiration that they need so they can actually relay that out to the community that they're serving. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Trevor, did you know that the chief was actually my lieutenant in um, FTO when I went through the academy? I did not. Yeah. What yeah. was that like? Uh, it was awesome, actually. <laughs> um, not only is he a great leader, but um, so I, I'm a father and I get emotional pretty easy, especially right. father daughter things and stuff. But so the chief took over one day as our um, FTO for the academy. Mm-hmm. And it was the end of the day, and he said, Hey, the four element leaders, you all are going to run a mile and a half, and whatever, ele- whatever element wins, you're, the rest of the team, your team does not have to run a mile and a half. So we made it say, we made it fair and picked the the, the slower runners. Yeah. And I, I don't know why, but I was picked as one of the slower runners. No way. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. And um, so we went and we ran a mile and a half. And as we were coming near the finish line, I talked to my other element leaders. I said, hey, let's cross hand in hand, see what, Ooh, see what the chief does. Okay. <laughs> so I we like cross it. hand in hand, and chief's just like, who told you to do that? <laughs> get in line and then he gets a little emotional he's like that's the greatest thing greatest uh sign of leadership i've ever seen all y'all everybody went home so yeah yeah. it was cool yeah yep and and honestly that was amazing and that's that's what going through the academy and building that uh, you know teamwork you know that that uh, camaraderie that you all were able to establish and Mm -hmm. build taking care of each other not trying to stab each other in the back and doing that crab effect where you're pulling each other down so Mm -hmm. that someone else can get above and you all got it yeah. You know, and but you got it early on in the academy, and yes. you understood that you have to be supportive of each other, you know, and encouraging of each other to be able to be successful. Yes. And uh, when we get out here on these crime scenes, you know, we get out in these 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 horrible incidents, mm-hmm. you know, we need each other to be able to stay strong so we can get the justice Absolutely. that the families need that you know are being victimized. Yeah. And so that's an aspect that a lot of people don't understand or see, mm-hmm. but it, it, there's a lot that goes into it. And you all, yeah, you're very yeah. impressive that day. And I did. I got emotional. Tears started running my right? eyes because I'm that's thinking, awesome. wow. This this is, I've, I've accomplished my task as yeah. a leader. This is what needed to be done, yeah. Yeah. you know, and I, and I didn't have to tell them. This mm-hmm. is just something that was ingrained in, in their personality and their character to come together and, uh, you know, be successful as a team. 
Yeah, it's like a Hallmark movie. It movie. was. <laughs> it was. I thought it was in trouble, and then he sent us all home, and I was like, Hoo-hoo! Yeah. Yeah. So it was. It was awesome. good. Chief, I know you're a busy guy. You you touched on um, being the Tyreek Hill um, <laughs> of the department, and you touched on being gym uh, being a gymnast when you were younger and stuff. Um, you're not gonna leave and go to Miami, are you? <laughs> like Tyreek. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? I honestly <laughs> thought about it, but I can't afford it, so I'll be, right. I'm here. Yeah. Well, we're we're, <laughs> we're glad you, we're glad you're here. Do you have anything? I don't, is there like a is there like a favorite moment from your career that that stands out above everything else? I mean, obviously, becoming chief is is a huge, huge moment, huge honor. But is there like anything in your thirty years that just stands out above everything else? Well, I mean, I have a lot of really positive, really good moments. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is one of those moments where you know I was a dear officer, so I I taught like three thousand kids. Mm-hmm. You know, some you know some will say that all. Oh, you know, you f- some of them failed. Some of them, you know, I wasn't successful. Maybe because they drank, or maybe because they smoked now, or maybe because they're even on some some drugs. Mm-hmm. But I actually was I was promoted, and it was t- about 13 years later. Um, I'm working out on the streets. Um, I'm working as a sergeant down at Patrol South, and I walk into a house, and uh, there was a lady there, and um, she was missing a little bit of teeth, and she was an older she was an older per- person. And most of the kids that I taught dare to were 10 years of age. Mm-hmm. You know, so they were kids, so they transitioned. I don't recognize them as adults. And I looked in her mouth, and she had, you know, what looked like, you call it meth mouth. The mm-hmm. teeth are a little rotted. And I'm like, ugh, you know, this lady must have been on meth, but she looks like she's passionate. She really wants to take care of her kids. And she comes up to me, and she starts talking about how um, she went through some things. And she yeah. goes, because of her home life, she believes it was unavoidable that, you know, those things that she went through and uh, those experiences that she, you know, she had to learn in life. And she was telling me that she was back in school and, you know, she had a child and that, you know, her, the father for her uh, baby wasn't in her life anymore, Mm -hmm. but that she was about to graduate, you know, a nursing, nursing program and that she was working hard towards that. And so for me, you know, she said, all she, she and she even had a, a picture of her, the dare picture back when back fifth grade when um, oh, wow. I had a dare Corvette and that was seized from a drug um, you know drug seizure yeah. and I, we put lights on it and so I would stand by the car where the kids got to sit inside of it she still had that with her I mean uh-huh. it was a very emotional moment oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. and uh, so it made me really proud it made me happy to yeah. know mm-hmm. that uh, I was able to you know have that effect on someone's life that you know your our paths are set to a point we mm-hmm. can change and, and, and direct you know our paths you know slightly but you know her home life was so bad and she felt that she would have probably been dead or in, in a worse situation yeah. if she hadn't had that mentoring you know and at 10 years of age yeah. and that guidance is just continue to fall back on that hey I can be someone I right. am someone I can be better I can be successful and uh, you know going off to become a nurse and you know and being successful fantastic so that's one of the accomplishments yeah. you know and, and there are a lot of a lo- there are a lot of little ones like that throughout right. my career no big wow you know mm-hmm. um, you know save the rainforest or anything <laughs> like that. Yeah, right. but uh, just helping people and that's what I got in this job for yeah. is just to see the smiles on those individuals that I'm able to help mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's very important. Yeah, you know, a awesome. lot of, all the things that we see on a day to day basis out there on the streets is um, it's good to know that somewhere down the line we've saved a life, whether it's one or or dozens. I think it's amazing that you have that story to always remember, and she has that impact that you left her. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So anyway, so not, what was also great was when I got promoted um, to interim chief, or mm-hmm. you know, at this point in time, all of the um, acknowledgments on the blogs or the, I don't know what you're calling them. Oh, the Facebook posts and stuff? All the or? posts, the posts, yeah. yeah. And just to see all the positive people, you know, oh, that was my, right. uh, the guy used to work at the skating rink, you know, when I used to go right. as, a, as a kid, and my mama, boy, I used to, she used to give him a hard time because I would go <laughs> run off and, you know, he'd have to keep track and things like that. So, yeah, uh, things like that, just seeing all the positive effects that I've had on people, you know, throughout mm-hmm. the years that are now adults with babies in our community yeah and uh, you know I just my hats go off to them because now there are leaders there are you know moms and dads and people that are, are running you know our city and, and being a part of our city so you know love it Wichita proud for sure absolutely well chief we appreciate your time we know you're super busy um, thanks for joining the first podcast first episode first so um, look forward to many more yeah okay. hopefully we'll have you back on again thank you appreciate it yeah thanks yeah. Sir. have a good one thanks I'll just fist bump in the air. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks, Chief, for coming out. I appreciate that. Got to interview the Chief of Police. That's pretty cool. Yeah, as far as first guests go for podcasts, that's kind of like the pinnacle. Yeah. So it's like it's downhill from here. It it is. But he set the bar for everybody else. That's a high bar. It is a high bar, especially like everybody that comes in. I'm like, the Chief talked about some pretty deep stuff. 
Yeah, they're gonna have to up their game. Yeah. Did you did, did you know he was my FTL? I did not. Yeah. That's new to me. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That it was, was cool pretty story. cool. I feel like he's followed me my whole career. He's a good dude. Yeah. That's not a bad person to have follow you your whole career. That that is true. That is true. Could think of worse people to follow you. Yeah, that's true. So this is a podcast involving police officers, obviously. So we should probably talk obviously. about crime trends. Crime trends. That's yes. a great segue. You like the segue? I worked on it topic, all which, night. Which is we've been hammering on this all the time and it's still an issue um i'll ask you a question chad mm-hmm. is it a good idea for me to leave my gun in my car no why well because people break into cars a lot if this was a world that we could leave our doors unlocked whether that's a vehicle or our home um then yes but this is unfortunately not a world that we live in and unfortunately people do break into cars and leaving a firearm in there um allow somebody to take that firearm and potentially use that in another crime later down the road so you're saying if i leave my gun in my car it's likely that someone will be able to steal it yes but my car is locked well people still know how to break into cars mm. you know and then you got to pay for a window that's busted Good out point yeah it just adds up me i fortunately have not had my car broken into as far as a window being broken out mm-hmm. but i've heard that little back window is pretty expensive so when i first moved to wichita i lived um over by central and waco okay i had an old buick LeSabre. And the doors didn't lock. Oh. And I left my video camera in there. Oh. Because I was from a small town, safe area. You never needed to lock anything. Yeah. Came out one day, my video camera was gone. And I was like, well, I guess that's my fault. Man. Did you make a police report? No. Yeah. I didn't. So I would suggest no matter what, you still make a police report because now we have crime analysts. Yeah. That can be able to determine if we actually have a hot spot in your area. Because what happens if... You know, eight people in your apartment complex got their car broken into, but only two reported. It's not really a hot spot. I was young and dumb, and I did not help the situation. That's okay. At all. But I've learned. I've learned. I will make a police report. uh, Speaking of young and kind of going back briefly, Chief's been on the department 30 plus years. Have you been on the earth 30 plus years? I've been on the earth exactly 30 years. Oh, okay. Okay. So he's been a cop as long as I've literally been alive. See, he's been, I was not five. Not feel old or anything. No, right? and he looks, he said he was 50 years plus years old? He does not look 50. Does not look 50. I hope I look like that at 50. I, yeah. yeah. But I'll anyway, back to back to the crime trends. Yeah, make sure you're locking up your, your, your guns yeah. in, a, in a gun safe. Actually, a car is not a gun safe. car is not a gun safe. You not actually made this a point on your TikTok. Yeah. What's your TikTok? Uh, Officer Macy. Officer Macy. At Officer Macy. Okay. Follow me there. I've got some public safety tips. They're pretty good too. Silly videos. Yeah. And they'll know you'll they'll know it's you because you got a picture with Sergeant Justice. Yeah. So the one and only. We need to get him on the podcast. We do. Maybe even make him a TikToker or something like that. Yeah. Oh, he's no. a great dude. I he, love working for him. He's funny. He's funny. He's got funny. some dance moves too. He does. So great dancer, that Sergeant Justice. Yeah. One has to go. Are we ready for that yet? Yeah. You sure? I want to move on. Let's move on. One has to go. Have you? Got, if you've never heard of this, it's uh, you take four things, and you hopefully they're all under the same category, because that'd be weird if it was all different categories. Um, yeah, it'd be easier to be, pick something. I yeah, think. you know? So you take four <laughs> items, and under one category, you got to say, one's got to go forever, right? So I okay. got one made up for today. Okay. It's breakfast is the category, all right? So okay. one has to go. We'll put up on the screen. Grapefruit. Right, grapefruit's always got to go. All right, so you got pancakes, waffles, oh. French toast, and a cinnamon roll. I'm I know gone. what I'm going to pick. Cinnamon roll is gone. What? It's not a breakfast food. It, it is a breakfast food. It's not. It's for dinner. It's for uh, dessert. Okay, what do you mean dinner. for dinner? Because I, w- I really want to know about this. Cause like I got chili it. and cinnamon rolls. Okay, now, but with chili, because you're, you're a true Kansan, right? Yeah. Okay, so. Well, I was born <coughs> in Kansas. But. Okay. But do you dip it or do you? Cause no. What do you mean no? I eat it after the chili. No. You don't mix the chili and the cinnamon roll. That's, that's yes. weird. Yes. No. You put the cinnamon roll in the bowl and then you cover it you with chili. Cover it with cover chili? Cover it with chili. It is. It'll, two words. Life changing. You're a monster. No. I'm not. A, oh, I, will, I am when I eat that. It's delicious. That sounds I'm, horrible. I'm not I bet lie. there's Kansans out there or Midwest people that, that have done this. Uh, they're either going to dip it or they're going to do like I do. My wife, been married 16 years to this lady. She is not a Kansan. She's a San, San Antonian. I think that's the proper word to San Antonin? San Antonin. I like San Antonian. San Antonin. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> she never heard of this until about 12 years into our marriage. And she and likes it? She likes it, but she's a dipper. She doesn't do like I do. She likes mm. to dip it. It's, it's I'll good. Try it. it's I'll good. try a dip once, but 
That just doesn't sound like it. But you also got to get a good cinnamon roll. You oh, know? Yeah. So get a good like Pillsbury. Is that a is that a good cinnamon I th- roll? I think that would be a good one. You more like a traditional homemade style. Well, guy. have you ever been to Carriage Crossing up near Hutch? Yes. Great. That's got a roll. cinnamon roll as big as my head. Mm. But now I'm hungry. So, but for me, what I would choose. Yeah. What what's what's is what's waffles. The one? Waffles. Yeah, waffles. Because I I feel like it's like a, I don't know, like a knockoff of a pancake. And you know, no, for me being. Is, yeah. Way better than a pancake. No, man. Like you get waffles at your your what your complimentary breakfast for your hotel and stuff, and they're all they're all kind of basic. They're all the same. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. You spread the butter on the waffle, and the, the squares are like little pockets for they, your mean, butter. Like they hold so much butter, way more than a pancake. I mean, yeah, but you know, Paul Cruz, he said pancakes. He's getting rid of pancakes. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't get it. Like why, that would be the one I would never. Excuse me. Never get rid pancakes. of pancakes. Pancakes are delicious. I hop. I hop. Mm. You know what's really good on pancakes besides butter and syrup? Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Yeah. Yep. You spread that peanut we butter on that. See, uh, I think it's amazing. My uh, my family grew up. My cousin is a uh, when he was in high school, he was a three sport athlete. Was really really good, really muscular. And this guy would eat six pancakes, peanut butter and all syrup. Mm. It's delicious. It's a lot of pancakes. It is a lot of pancakes. So have you had the uh, pancakes at Homegrown? I have not. They're, they're very good. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Let's go there sometime. What's so good about them? They're just, I mean, they're fluffy, they're buttery, they're delicious. Yeah. What's not to love? I mean, that's true. That's true. Fluffy and buttery is, is pretty good. That's what you gotta get. That is. So, so I think we're about to wrap up. I think so, man. I'm liking this. I'm digging this first episode. You're covering the B though on our on our oh. thing. Yeah, and it's good like coffee reek. My bad. Um, no, it's okay. Coffee it's reeks. your tight T-shirt that's keeping you from moving. <laughs> so is that I a? I need to not borrow T-shirts anymore. Right. This I'm is pretty a youth large. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. It's a 16, 18 Way on the too back. Tight. It's okay. I can't. Yeah, only I cannot. I, you ain't catching me putting a youth on it. It won't. It, it it wouldn't look good. I'm honestly surprised it got on my body. Yeah. But. I, I think it's that not, you actually asked for the It's not comfortable. I think you just asked for it for this did podcast. Not, did not. No? Did not. Okay. But yeah, I think we, we wrap it up. This is the first episode. Um, next week. Next week. We're we'll going to have, have a, a, good? another guest. Yeah. You know who yet? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah. But what we want you to do, though, is be able to um, submit questions for our next guest. We won't tell you who it is yet, but I'll tell you one thing. It is somebody within the uh, Wichita Police Department. Somebody... Uh, high ranking high ranking so any questions please submit them to police web at wichita.gov dot gov and put a uh, coffee break in the subject line so we know that it's a question for coffee break we get a lot of emails to that account we so do that'll help us sort through them yep anything you want to know about the department about chad or myself yep. uh our guests anything going on in wichita crime trends Public safety tips. You want to leave them with something about you that people might not know? No. No? <laughs> Why not? I don't know. Are I, you nervous? You put me on the spot. I know. I don't know I what know. to say. How about this? How about it? You got to tell them that you actually are a singer. I'm not a singer. But you sing. You can sing, right? I'd like karaoke. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not a professional singer. Well, no, because you wouldn't be here if you were a professional well, singer. Well, no. Yeah. But I you mean, can sing a little bit. I don't know that I would I would consider myself a good singer, but okay. I can karaoke with with the best among of them. The best. What's your yeah. go to karaoke? I've got a whole list yeah. on my phone. Okay, I like uh, I like uh, Jet. Are you gonna be my girl? That's okay, a classic. Gotcha. I'm, or some I'm Eminem I'm, every once in a while. Eminem is yeah, yeah. definitely go to Backstreet Boys in sync. That's Ooh, my yeah. That's my go to every time. Backstreet. What's something about you that people may not know? <sighs> Let's see. Something about me. I was in the military. I was a dog handler in the military. Really? Yep. For six and a half that. years, I was a dog handler. Ten years, I was in the military. Which branch? Air Force. So Air wait, Force. I'm gonna pause for all the haters that are gonna talk crap about the Air Force because it happens a lot. Yeah. But it, it's okay. It's okay. This is a safe place. This is a safe place, and and I have obviously I have some thick skin, and I can I can take that. That's good. You know. But yeah. Dog That's handler, cool. pretty cool. You know, That's your cool. boss really doesn't what yell was, at you. What was your dog's name? Dude, I had four dogs in my time. So I had Bruiser, Aslan, Viper. Aslan from uh, from uh, Chronicles of Narnia? That's where I think they got the name. Yeah. Yeah. So then I had a dog named Viper. That was pretty cool. And Sweet then dog. my last one was Andor. And Andor was kind of, he was special in his own way. 
because he had a uh, a really bad ear infection. Oh. Um, so his head tilt. So you know when you talk to a dog normally, sometimes yeah. they tilt their head. Well, Andor's was always tilted. So when he when you would talk to him, it'd go straight up. That's funny. <laughs> That's pretty good. So anyway, That's coffee good break. Know. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. No, thanks Thank for hanging you out. Thank you guys with us. for watching. Yeah. Uh, think, uh, tune in next time for yep. Coffee Break. Till next week. Peace.